Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video in the Swift Fun Algorithm series. So what is it that we are going to be talking about today? Well, it is the very famous Fibonacci sequence algorithm. And so let me uh, go into Wikipedia here and explain to you what that is exactly. So if you search for a Fibonacci number sequence, you'll get this page here and we're gonna talk about this modern usage of the uh, Fibonacci sequence here. And essentially it's a pattern of numbers where you start out with zero and one, as specified by the definition here, and you get zero, one, and then uh, the next number is basically the previous two numbers added together, which is zero plus one, you get one, and then one plus one is two, two plus one is three, uh, two plus three is five, five plus three is eight, and so on and so forth. So hope you get the idea behind this uh, pattern here. Now, uh, the algorithm that we are going to be uh, implementing today is to actually implement a function that returns us the Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci sequence uh, inside of an array of numbers. So uh, given a number of steps, for example, if you're given like five, we are going to be returning an array which contains zero, one, one, two, and three, and perhaps five. Doesn't really matter so much what the edge is, but essentially we're going to be returning an array of Fibonacci numbers, uh, starting from the first two uh, seed numbers, zero and one. So, all right, enough talk. Uh, let's go ahead and go into Xcode here. I'm gonna create a playground to actually do this challenge. I'm just gonna call it Fib. Uh, usually you'll see it as Fib inside of a lot of textbooks that you might uh, run into uh, inside of college. So. Uh, playgrounds contains this little nice area and a couple of panes where you can see exactly what your function is doing or what your code is doing rather. And we're just gonna create a very simple function called fib for number or for num steps like that. And then this function takes in an integer that's called num steps and it, it'll actually return us the Fibonacci sequence as an array of numbers, right? So. I'm going to return just an empty array for now, and I'm going to call fib for num steps, and I'm gonna call, let's say, one for now. So that returns us this blank array, just as we would expect from this function. Now let's go ahead and start implementing this uh, function right here. And essentially we want to start off with the first two numbers of zero and one, and we will start off this sequence with zero and one inside of an integer array like this. And then we will actually return this sequence like that. Now essentially this will return us that very simple sequence of zero and one. And here is sort of the magic in which we start adding the numbers together. So I'm gonna run through this step-by-step step slowly so you can see what's going on. And basically I have a for loop and this is going to say for index inside of zero up to num steps. So this gets executed um, number of steps and we will just add a couple of numbers together, okay? So the idea is we want to just append these numbers onto sequence. So we want to append two numbers. So first plus second, like this. <laughs> so basically we want to append actually just one number and it's the addition of the first value which is this, and then the second value, which is that, right? So let's get the first value by just saying let first equals sequence dot first, like this, and this actually returns an optional integer, um, and we just need to use the bang operator to make it a, a non-optional non value, and we'll use let second equal sequence dot last. So sequence dot last gives us uh, these two numbers here. And this actually needs to append like that. And here we go. So notice how we have sequence appending these numbers together. And so we get zero, one, one, one. And if we look at the Wikipedia definition, that's not exactly the Fibonacci sequence. So the reason why this does not work is because it's constantly getting first, which is the zero value, 
and it's constantly adding 1 plus 0, 1 plus 0, 1 plus 0, because the last is always 1. Now, the way to fix this is to actually get the previous value from the last value. And we do that by saying sequence.count minus 2. So the moment we do that, we start to get the sequence coming out. And if we do sequence of 6, we actually get the entire sequence coming out here. Now, if you want to be kind of more technically correct in the number of steps, we can actually maybe perhaps subtract 2 from the number of steps. And then we get uh, a shorter version of the Fibonacci sequence. And that's essentially the idea of the function. And so I'm going to get rid of that warning right there um, by simply using an underscore. And this is just to say we don't need that index variable and get rid of that warning for us. So there we go. That is This is one way of doing the Fibonacci uh, sequence. And you actually have to worry about a couple of things here. So if you are trying to do a Fibonacci sequence number uh, for number of steps two, you get this 0, 1, 1. And if I try to do one, you actually get an error because num steps minus two is negative one. And this loop kind of goes crazy and doesn't know how to handle uh, 0 to negative 1. So if I want to correct that, I have to do num steps is less than or equal to perhaps 1. We just return sequence like this. And there we go. We get this actual uh, 0 and 1. And you kind of have to have this to fix this uh, loop value here. Okay. Now, the more interesting part of this challenge, I mean, this is actually uh, pretty cool and not a ton of code to write out. Um, but what if I were to tell you that there's a easier and uh, perhaps shorter way of implementing this Fibonacci sequence function? And so similar to my previous videos, we're going to be talking about Fib Fibonacci using recursion. So I'm just going to call it Fib. Now this is called Fib recursion. Uh, for num steps like this, and I am going to use num steps int, and this also returns an integer array. All right. So <laughs> let's see how we would do this using recursion. All right. Essentially, the idea is I want to call fib recursion with num steps, just like what we did earlier. And we want to return an array, right? So I'm just going to turn, return an empty array for here. And basically, we're going to, instead of producing the 0 and 1 inside of the function, we're just going to start it off with the 0 and 1 array. And we're going to add the values inside of this function. So if I just put 0, we get this 0 and 1. And this is a pretty good starting point for what we want to do inside of this function, right? Now, the only slight difference um, that I'm going to kind of add to this function is I actually want to uh, have two more parameters for this, this recursive function. And that is this first integer and then this second integer, like this. Basically, this function will take in the number of steps and the first value and second value. So if I redo this right here, I'll get num steps, which will just be one. And first will be zero and second will be one. Basically, th these are the two seed values, zero and one, that we use up here. And we are going to use those values to implement a recursive function for the Fibonacci sequence. And the idea is, I just want to simply return the array of first plus second like that. And then we get, what do we get here? We get 0, 1, 1. So that's looking pretty good. For example, the true sequence looks like this right here. So it's 0, 1. And if I change it to 5, we get 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. So it's pretty good. Now, the question is, what do we want to do inside of this function to make it actually return this value or this sequence right here. So if I change it 5, I still have 0, 1, 1. And if I do this right here, so if number of steps is 
let's say perhaps equal equals zero, we'll just return an empty array. And then, so here is the kind of cool part of this recursion function. So I'm just going to call this recursive function with num steps minus one. So every time I recurse or perform the, re perform the recursion, I take the steps down by one. And so what is the first and second value in this case? Basically, the first, the new first value will be the second value. And then the second value will be first plus second. So basically the same thing as this right here. You, you see that this is actually coming out as the Fibonacci sequence, like what we had in the first implementation of the function. And if I bring this to perhaps nine, we'll get the same thing. So we get exactly the same thing here, right? So that's pretty cool. And this is the complete implementation of the Fibonacci recursive function here. And the tricky part is uh, how do you know, or how can you easily tell what's going on inside of this function? So if I just print out first and second, we look at the console down here. So if you click on this little tab right here, you get this console and you get 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, and 3, 5. So basically it's just adding these numbers together and recursing on itself with those two values and it just adds, adds, adds. And basically, whenever you perform an array add on another array, it just concatenates those values together into one new array. And that's how the addition of arrays and how they kind of work together. Okay. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, you notice how we've eliminated perhaps 10 lines of code and basically kind of uh, made it a little bit more concise and it kind of contains maybe four lines of code. I guess this can go on its own line, but essentially the recursion is a little bit simpler and uh, perhaps a little cleaner is how I would describe it. And that's uh, how you would do recursion um, with the Fibonacci sequence implementation. And I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this algorithm in the, the, the video series. And make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for the next video. Enjoy your day, bye-bye.